Hello, and welcome back to another lesson on thermodynamics. We are now on the last lesson for the unit on temperature and heat. So in the previous lessons, we have discussed about thermal expansion, which involves the expansion of a material or the change in size of a material due to changes in temperature. And we also have discussed the study of heat or study of measuring heat, which is called calorimetry. And in these studies, uh, usually we measure the quantity of heat involved in temperature and phase changes. So for this lesson, for the last lesson of the unit on temperature and heat, we will be discussing about heat transfer and what are different mechanisms of heat transfer. So <clears throat> the natural flow of heat is from a uh, high temperature to low temperature. And there are three basic mechanisms of heat transfer. The first one is conduction. This is heat transfer by physical contact of the molecules. So heat is transferred from one molecule to another by physical contact. So if you have a source of heat and you touch the molecules, uh, which are the source of heat, so the molecules from the fire will uh, get in physical contact with the molecules in your hand. Hence, you feel the heat. Hence, heat is transferred to your hand. So the opposite of conduction is insulation. If you don't want heat to be transferred, you use an insulation or an insulator. So the second uh, mechanism of heat transfer is convection. So this involves mass movement of molecules. So example of that is rising of hot air. So for a candle, hot air from the candle will rise. And if you put your hands above the candle without physical contact, you will still feel the heat through convection due to the rise of hot air. So the last uh, mechanism of heat transfer is by radiation. So this involves light or electromagnetic waves. Example of that is the heat from the sun. The heat from the sun that you feel is because of infrared uh, infrared light or infrared uh, radiation. So also the way an IR thermometer gun operates is by detecting heat through radiation. So if you place your hand at the side of the candle without physically touching it, will still feel the heat because of radiation. So uh, another example is uh, when you are boiling uh, something in the electric stove. So you will notice that the coil from the electric stove, you will feel the heat from the coil of the electric stove because of radiation. You will feel the heat uh, from the pot because heat travels from one molecule to another by virtue of conduction to the handle to the to your hands and lastly uh heat will travel from the bottom of the pot to the top of the pot uh by virtue of convection by the mass movement of molecules so another way to describe how fast heat transfer is going on is by measuring the heat current or the amount of heat transferred per unit time. So basically, this tells you how fast heat is moving through a material. So heat per unit time. So in conduction, the heat current, uh, which is symbol H, uh, basically it's just a uh, change in heat over change in time, is defined as this, where K is what we call the thermal conductivity of the material. So aside from the coefficients of, coefficients of expansion, the specific heat, the latent heats, a material can also have a property called thermal conductivity. So this tells you how good a material is in conducting heat. So A here is just the cross-sectional area of the material where in the heat where the heat travels. Uh, TH is the temperature of the hot region, TC is the temperature of the colder region or the lower temperature region, L is the length of the material, and if you are not given the thermal conductivity, but you are given the thermal resistance R, 
uh, you can also use this formula. So the relationship between thermal conductivity and thermal resistance is that they are both, uh, they are inversely proportional to each other. So a good conductor is a poor resistor, thermal resistor or, or a poor insulator. So thermal resistance uh, is related to insulation. So if you want a good uh, heat conductor, you must find a material with a small uh, thermal resistance and vice versa. So if you will notice that standard unit of heat current is heat over time. So heat as a unit of calorie can also have a unit of joules. So joules per second. And joules per second um, is also known or it's also collectively known as watts. Joules per second is also the same as watts. So it has the same unit as power. So joules per second or watts, that is the unit for heat current. So you will notice here that the cross-sectional area of the material depends uh, directly on the heat current. Meaning, if you double the heat current, or sorry, if you double the cross-sectional area, you also double the heat current. Meaning, heat will travel faster for areas, uh, for materials with a larger or large cross-sectional area. Uh, on the other hand, the length of the material is inversely proportional to the heat current, which means materials with uh, longer lengths usually have small heat currents. So heat will travel very slowly for materials that are very long. So these are the different thermal conductivity values. Usually metals have the highest thermal conductivity values because metals are also good electrical insulators. And usually if, you, if a material is a good electrical insulator, it's also a good, sorry, uh, metals are conductors. Metals are good electrical conductors. And if a material is a good electrical conductor, then it's also a good thermal conductor. So metals such as silver have very high thermal conductivity. On the other hand, uh, wood, rock wool, or ice, or styrofoam, they have very small thermal conductivity values. And usually, materials with very low thermal conductivity values are poor conductors and poor conductors are actually good thermal insulators. If you don't want heat to conduct or to travel through a material, you use a material with a very small thermal conductivity, a very small value of K. By the way, the unit of K, thermal conductivity, is watts per meter Kelvin. So styrofoam, I mean, you don't want to feel the heat from your cup of, uh, from your hot coffee, when you place it in a styrofoam cup so that heat will travel very slowly from the coffee towards your hand. Hence, you will not get burned. So uh, poor, conduct, poor, poor thermal conductors are actually good thermal insulators. So in radiation, the heat current depends on the uh, quantity called emissivity. We'll no longer discuss this uh, thoroughly, and on the temperature. So it, it basically depends on the temperature raised to the power of four. So A here is just some constant. E is also, uh, sigma is also some constant called the Stefan Boltzmann constant. So this is an, a thermal IR, infrared image of a man. And you will notice that you can see the heat coming from the uh, head of the man and from his hands and he's drinking a very cold uh, say soda or liquid and usually in a thermal IR image cold objects appear dark uh, hot object appears bright so this one so let's have an example on heat current uh, through conduction we will only focus on heat current through conduction. So suppose you have a, a picnic cooler, which is made of a styrofoam box. So your cooler is made of a styrofoam box and the, the box has a total wall, wall area, including the lid, 
of 0 0.80 square meters. So this is now the cross-sectional area of your uh, material. And the wall has a thickness of 2 centimeters. So this wall thickness will be the length where the heat travels. So this will be your L. When it's filled with ice, water, and cans of coke at 0 degrees Celsius, what is the rate of heat flow into the box if the temperature outside of the wall is 30 degrees Celsius? So rate of heat flow is just the heat current. So how fast the heat is uh, flowing into the styrofoam. And how much ice melts in one day? So to solve for the rate of heat flow or the heat current, that is just, we just, we, we just use this formula. So K is the thermal conductivity. You already know from the previous table what is the thermal conductivity of styrofoam. So A is the cross-sectional area of the box. In this case, we are already given uh, 0 0.80 square meters. TH is the hotter temperature region, which is 30 degrees Celsius. And TC is the cold, colder temperature region, the other side of the styrofoam, which is 0 degrees Celsius. And L is the length of the uh, uh, material were in the heat travels, and this, this is equivalent to the thickness of the styrofoam box. So substituting all the values, uh, make sure to convert this into SI unit into meters, and you will get a value of 32.4 joules per second or 32.4 watts. So for the second problem, how much ice melts in one day? So we know that melting ice involves a uh, latent heat of fusion which is just mass times the latent heat of fusion. So the amount of heat involved in melting ice is just the mass of the ice times the latent heat of fusion for ice and water. And since heat, or sorry, heat current is just uh, heat per unit time Q over T, and therefore Q is just heat current times time. So solving for M, we get the heat current times time over latent heat of fusion and we get a value of 3.1 kilograms, okay? So for this last example, we have heat conduction through two bars. So a steel bar, <coughs> 10 centimeter long, is welded end to end to a copper bar. So you have a steel bar and a copper bar, they are both welded. So they have different lengths. Steel has a length of 10 centimeter, copper has a length of 20 centimeters. And both of these bars has a square cross-section. So instead of a tubular shape of their body, they have a, a square cross-section. So the free end of the steel bar is kept at 100 degrees Celsius by placing it in contact with steam. So there's boiling water here. So that's the boiling point, 100 degrees Celsius. And the free end of the copper is uh, kept at 0 degrees Celsius by placing ice. So ice, the freezing point is at 0 degrees Celsius. So find the steady state temperature at the junction of the two bars. So this one at the junction, what is the steady state temperature? And the total rate of heat flow through the two bars. So again, rate of heat flow means heat current. So in situations like this, where you connect two materials in series, the heat current is actually the same for both the steel bar and the copper bar. So meaning, the heat current flowing through the steel bar is equal to the heat current flowing through the copper bar. So using the formulas for the heat current, so this is the heat current for the steel. So K, thermal conductivity of the steel, cross-sectional area, uh, the higher temperature end of the steel, the lower temperature end of the steel, which is T, and the length of the steel. So for the copper, so thermal conductivity of copper, cross-sectional area of copper. In this case, the cross-sectional area of both the copper and the steel bars are the same. So meaning you can just divide both sides by A and we can cancel the cross-sectional area value. So the hotter end of the copper is T. The colder end of the copper is at TC or zero degrees Celsius. The length of the copper is 20 centimeters. So convert all of that to SI units, convert uh, the centimeters into um, meters, and then solve for T. So the only unknown quantity here is T, and the rest are given in the problem. So solve for T, and you get this equation.
And T is now, and you will get T to be equal to 20.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, so 100 degrees Celsius here, 20.7 degrees Celsius here, and here it's zero degrees Celsius. So that is the uh, distribution of the temperature. So find the steady, uh, find the total rate of heat flow through the two through the bars. So you can either use this formula since you already know T, or you can use this formula. It's just the same. You will get the same answer of 15.9 watts. So that is it for the heat current. So I hope uh, you have learned something about this chapter, which is all about temperature and heat. And I will see you again on the next chapter or the next uh, unit. So goodbye. Thank you.